like this and people who are, yeah, probably people are also connected in YouTube. Uh, so uh, as a president of the Heritage Network, uh, I am very happy to introduce this first webinar between uh, two members of the Heritage Network, uh, nominally Ecole Centrale of Nantes and IIT Madras. And uh, I want just to introduce uh, in some short word the uh, Heritage Network. And then I will give the talk to Professor uh, Sriram from IIT Madras, then Professor Pierre Ferron from Ecole Centrale of Nantes. Yeah, uh, so the Heritage Network is uh, an Indo uh, European network of 28 leading technical higher education institutions uh, jointly engaged in collaboration throughout research and academic activity addressing common priority of national interest and well being. The Heritage Network aim at achieving those goals by identifying partner institution willing to undertake joint research project, academic and research exchange. Uh, the Heritage Network propose a unique platform and framework for sharing expertise and best practice and foster higher level educational program. Uh, we have uh, 15 Indian members uh, from uh, the uh, technical and uh, uh, scientific university and uh, institu institute in India, namely an university, uh, IIT Mangalore, Mumbai, Delhi, IIT uh, of Mine, IIT Guwahati, Endor, Kampur, IIT Madras, Gorki, Ropar, etc. And from the European side, we have also 13 European members. And uh, this network started thanks to the European uh, support, financial support, since 2008. OK. And uh, now I am very happy to introduce this uh, first uh, webinar series that's aimed to uh, to promote uh, some research activity between two or more uh, partners in the Heritage Network. So let me introduce Professor uh, Sriram, who can now give the speech about his activities and the activities of his department for 15 or 20 minutes. OK? So, Professor Sliram, you can introduce yourself and uh, share your documents. Okay. Yeah. I stop my sharing now. So, that you can see my screen. I think the presentation is fine. Yes, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, very good morning and uh, good evening, uh, everyone. Um, uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Professor Dennis, as well as the Heritage Network team for uh, giving me an opportunity to talk about uh, Ocean Union Department at IIT Madras, the activities which we do, uh, as well as the what is the current research which we are trying to uh, do in my particularly in my research group so first of all thanks for giving me opportunity and inviting me uh, for this uh, talk so uh, as of uh, Benny told I just it's only 20 minutes so I don't have much time to uh, give in detail uh, but of course you can contact us and most of the things are available in the internet and uh, to the talk is oriented towards uh, first i would like to talk about my department which is department of ocean engineering and we have some of the unique uh, facilities in india particularly uh, we have some seven hydronic testing facility uh, as well as uh, i would like to introduce two of the new centers uh, which have been uh, proposed and uh, what are the facilities that is going to come up in these new centers which is already been funded 
and some research projects. Uh, I may not have time to go through all those things, but let me try to uh, put within the 20 minutes time which is given to me. So uh, in our department of ocean engineering at IIT Madras, we normally work in uh, three different uh, disciplines. Uh, we have about 22 faculties um, at uh, department of ocean engineering, and we work in the, uh, the field of naval architecture, offshore engineering, as well as in coastal engineering. Uh, so the basically the Department of Ocean Engineering initially started as a center uh, way back in 1977, and then it, because of its uh, growth, it has been converted to department in the year 1999. Uh, and all the hydrodynamic testing testing facility which are housed in this uh, building uh, is of course the initial one was funded by uh, Germany, and we have about seven hydrodynamic testing facilities. Uh, we extensive, extensively use these hydronomic testing facility for our research activities as well as for our students, uh, both mostly undergraduate as well as postgraduate students. And we have a, a wave basin, uh, which is of uh, 30 meter by 30 meter and three meter deep. And we can able to generate uh, multi-directional uh, waves uh, and we can able to do maneuvering studies and all those activities in this particular facility. And of course, we do have a, a towing tank, which is of 85 meter long with 3.2 meter width and uh, 2.8 meters water depth. And we have a speed of up to four meter per second. And most of our naval architect colleagues used to uh, do their experiments over here for ship resistance and propulsion. And apart from that, we do have a, a deep water wave flume, which uh, is about 90 meter in length. And it has a deep pit of two meter. Uh, wherein we normally do uh, offshore uh, studies on offshore structures. And uh, those are uh, related mostly to the deep water facilities and do, we do have a, a shallow water facility to cater to the uh, requirement of coastal engineering. Uh, so we have a shallow water wave flume with uh, 72 meter length and two meter wide uh, with, the water, with the tank depth of 2.7 meter wherein we can able to vary the water depth from 30 centimeter to two meter, and most of our coastal engineering uh, structures like uh, breakwaters, the pile support of breakwater forces can be studied in this particular facility. And the fifth one is uh, basically a wave come current flume, uh, which is a very small facility when compared to the other uh, things, but normally we use this facility for our undergraduate courses, as well as some of our research students do this, use this facility for their um, work uh, for, for example, some a kind of a wave impact on it. But if you look at all these five facilities, uh, the wall is made of concrete. So that is a requirement for us to understand the kinematics or the flow characteristics uh, behind the wave. So we introduce a glass plume uh, with uh, PAV, measurement that is particle image velocimetry, wherein you can able to measure uh, using high speed camera or the particle kinematics and all those things. And this is very small facility with 20 meter in length with 50 centimeter in width and the water depth is up to uh, 50 centimeter and it has a stroke length of uh, 1.2 meter. And finally, we have a shallow wave basin, uh, particularly this is uh, another facility. One of the uh, importance of this particular facility is all these previous facilities have been imported. The wave makers are imported from abroad. Where in this particular facility, we have developed our own wave makers and it is being customized uh, particularly for our application. And again, this facility is uh, 20 meter in uh, length, length and 15 meter in width. And it has uh, five wave makers can, that can be used to study for uh, most of the coastal engineering problem like uh, triangle T studies or a breakwater, uh, offshore breakwater like the one which is in the photo. So, uh, we in a department of ocean engineering, uh, we not only do a research, we try to transform the research to the national building. And some of these are some of the work which is being carried out from our department from my colleagues. Um, one is uh, particularly the one which is in the top is the inner groin field, which is of course designed and uh, implemented by our department as well as the sea jump of the INS Viras. And uh, the GSLV Mark III, the entire uh, capsule entry was tested at IIT Madras before it being commissioned way back uh, the landfall. And uh, of course, apart from this uh, uh, offshore uh, related one, we do a coastal engineering uh, part of it, wherein these are some of the projects 
uh, my my colleagues involved in uh, transforming uh, the research as well as they try to use these facilities uh, to do the experiment before they commission anything in the field. So uh, based on our uh, 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 input to the nation building, uh, Ministry of Shipping uh, three years back sanctioned uh, a, a National Technology Center for Port, Waterways and Coast, which will be act as a technical arm for most of the uh, port uh, in India. And as part of this particular center, uh, we are uh, constructing one of the Asia's largest facility, uh, which is going to come up in our new campus, which is we call as a discovery campus at IIT Madras from the present campus, campus which is 40 kilometers from the present campus. Uh, the length and width of the facility is massive in the scale because it is going to be 90 meter in length and 60 meter in width. And it is going to be having a wave maker with 152 wave makers. So it's basically completely in-house developed this particular wave maker. So this is the concept testing which we have undergone uh, for this entire wave maker setup. Uh, and each and everything has been constructed from our side. And that is how we will able to have full hold of this facility once it is commissioned uh, at maybe at the end of this year. So if you look at all these facilities, um, uh, these are small scale. Of course, it is. Uh, we have about eight as of now. It's going to be eight or so uh, facilities, all under one roof. Uh, but uh, all are small scale. In when we try to compare it with the ocean uh, scale, which we are trying to deal in the ocean engineering field. So, in order to overcome uh, this scale of pipes, normally people will go for a large scale model or prototype model in a controlled environment. So, in order to cater to this particular requirement, which we lack. Uh, as part of uh, Institute of Eminence, uh, which is awarded to IIT Madras, we have proposed uh, a center for large scale ocean research, which we call as a sea flow, uh, with some of my colleagues, uh, seven colleagues from our department, uh, wherein uh, we are going to uh, construct one of the world's largest facility with a wave flume of 500 meter in length and 8 meter in deep and 5 meter in wide and which is going to also have a deep pit of 10 meters. So you can able to really see that we are going to generate a realistic sea scenario in the laboratory condition uh, with the current generation facility of up to one meter per second. So the main purpose of this center for large scale ocean research, uh, which uh, I will be leading this particular center is that uh, apart from introducing this world's largest testing facility, we would like to also have an international working research group so that they could able to access this uh, research uh, facility as well as to have a collaborative activities and to try to uh, have an industrial link. So as part of this uh, international research group, of course, we identified some of my colleagues uh, who we already collaborated with. And of course, ECN uh, France, uh, Professor Pierre Ferrand is involved in this particular project wherein we are inviting all uh, the peers in this particular field to visit us to collaborate and intensify our activity. Um, so, uh, as part of this particular center, as I told you, it is going to be large and massive in scale. Uh, so the cost is also going to be enormous. So we want to have everything to develop in house, even the way maker and all those things. So what we was proposed is we basically split this center, uh, task into two phases. That is phase one as well as phase two, where in the phase one, we would like to uh, showcase the endogenous development of this particular a massive facility in an intermediate scale. So the intermediate scale facility is already being constructed again at our uh, Discovery Campus. So very soon we are going to uh, install a wave maker of a uh, little bit of a smaller scale of uh, with a water depth of 2.5 meter wherein we have a stroke of uh, um, four meters. So again, it is, of course, this is also going to be uh, intermediate. Uh, so this uh, we put the name as the intermediate, but the thing is, when compared to the large scale facility, this is the intermediate facility. That's what we meant. Uh, so these are some of the facilities which are present uh, and some of the facility which is going to come up at IIT Madras uh, for uh, the international collaboration to intensify it. And uh, the second part of my uh, talk um, is uh, deals with the research projects. Uh, so. Uh, particularly, I was. Uh, these are some of the projects which uh, I was involved in it with some of my colleagues from uh, uh, UK, uh, Russia, and Germany. 
of course it is uh, pure bilateral funding and uh, these are some of the uh, completed and recent ongoing projects too uh, so I, I don't have time to go through all those uh, projects but uh, in a nutshell uh, we try to uh, understand the uh, problem of uh, hydrodynamics uh, using the experimental tool as well as the numerical uh, tool so of course as i told you previously we have a lot of experimental facilities so we will try to understand and simulate these large scale scenario in the small scale with some kind of uh, improved uh, approaches like how to generate the waves how to understand the wave characteristics in a controlled environment for example for a case of uh, offshore structures or in the case of a uh, naval architecture suppose if there is a skip capsizing of the ship we try to generate these scenarios in the laboratory in order to understand the stability aspect of it or if you uh, look for a coastal engineering uh, perspective when there is going to be an impact of the tsunami waves that is coming near to the coast uh, how these impacts one can able to design uh, the load for these kind of impacts for the design guidelines so as well as a uh, very extreme scenario during a storm event how a vertical wall how the wave breaking is going to be intact with the structure and these things we can able to reproduce in our uh, plume uh, in a small scale but there is going to be obviously scale of it that's why we are going for a, a large scale facility but apart from these um, experimental tool uh, within my research group we also developed some of the state of the art numerical models um, we have uh, developed uh, over a period of time, uh, last 10 or 15 years, we have developed a variety of numerical models, uh, uh, which has a high in computational cost, but of course, uh, computational cost comes with the high in modeling the physics of the problem. But if you want to reduce the physics, of course, the computational cost will try to reduce. Like, for example, when you try to use a potential flow theory or a, a depth average model like Bosnic model. In order to overcome these aspects uh, recently or in the last five or six years, we are trying to develop the hybrid modeling, which is a fluid fluid structure coupling, wherein you can able to have a less computation time with more physics in the modeling part of it. So I'm not going into the details of it, but let us try to put uh, some of the um, uh, models which are currently available with us, which have been developed, of course, internally from us it's not an open source and we are trying to release these models as an open source uh, in near future in the navistock model we do develop both in the particle based method which is the uh, uh, mesh uh, deformation i mean when you have a large deformation problem the mesh based model has some difficulty in order to overcome it particle methods are a little bit of comfortable but of course it has its own disadvantages and uh, the application of these models which we developed uh, have been applied to a wide variety of problems ranging from a, a wave structure interaction to a wave coastal engineering like a porous structure interaction or a wave vegetation structure interaction uh, uh, to some of these aspects as well as we try to apply it also to the floating bodies uh, for a twin hull or for a, a floating body dynamics or for a three-dimensional uh, waves uh, interacting with these kind of a particle uh, uh, methods. So I'm not going to the details of it. So these models are already available with us. And the same way we do have uh, mesh-based models, which have been, of course, developed by ourselves, uh, which is based on finite volume method. Um, uh, so these models, of course, we use it for uh, basic fluid mechanics for trying to understand the relative Taylor instability or for the 3D uh, dam break model or for the complex uh, wave structure interaction as well as for wave cylinder structure interaction. These are developed by my uh, uh, my one of my postdoc, uh, Dr. Uh, Saswat, for a variety of uh, applications on this uh, aspect. So the same way we do have uh, models that caters to them. These are Navistock models, so obviously it will be time consuming. So we can able to reduce the approximation and then we can go for a potential flow model. But again, uh, we need to understand some of those aspects uh, in the modeling the physics where it is applied. So that is more uh, important. So that is the potential flow model. And then we do have a, a Bosnian model wherein we can able to do the triangle to studies. And these models have been used for our inland navigation uh, ship studies and all those things. Uh, due to time restriction, I'm just skipping it. Um, 
and finally uh, what i would like to uh, say is we do have a couple model like uh, we try to couple the potential flow theory with the bosnik theory with the navisberg model so that uh, we can able to increase the computational time but of course more important for our uh, thing is we need to model the physics of the problem as close as uh, possible within the problem domain so that was the intention of these models uh, in developing these models uh, both for the a wave structure interaction as well as for the wave elastic structure interaction wherein the elastic property will also try to be uh, will be incorporated in the model so that we can able to study the uh, uh, structure deformation when the once the wave try to impact uh, the the structure so uh, so of course we do have variety of models but where do these models stand so that was one of the each and every every university in the world try to develop their own model uh, but as part of uh, recently what we did was we as a group uh, with um, uh, as part of isop uh, we released uh, experimental uh, data set uh, wherein we want to compare or validate uh, the 20 different uh, state of the art solvers that are available with different universities around the world to come together and then let us try to understand what is the error that is going to come up uh, in this uh, solver that has been developed separately by various groups so the intention is not to identify which is the best solver rather to identify what is the a recommended error that one could able to obtain in these uh, uh, simulation and in this kind of numerical modeling. So, of course, uh, many people have been involved. More than 20 solvers have been used in the part A and part B is a little bit challenging. And then very few people have been involved, as of course, uh, easy and NAND also as part of this particular uh, comparative study. Uh, so, that is so. But these model comparisons so far, it lies uh, only in a uh, small scale, but there is. Uh, sorry, uh, but sorry, there is some. Um, so, uh, what I would like to say these uh, models have been um, uh, compared only with the small scale. So, the future direction is try to do it in the large scale more uh, experimental data, try to compare it with the uh, available models and try to understand the vortex city as turbulence. And that would be done uh, in near future within the ISO uh, community, uh, community as well as within our group of based on the seafloor uh, project. So with this, I would like to close. Uh, thank you for giving this uh, opportunity. Uh, as well as I would like to acknowledge uh, some of the funding agencies as well as my research group uh, who are the backbone in developing all these models um, as well as involved in uh doing this probably thank you thank you everyone yeah thank, thank you very much professor Sriram. It, it it was very interesting and it showed really the, the excellent expertise of uh, your uh, iit madras institution in the, it's okay so you just keep maybe you can stop your sharing if you, if you can uh, yeah, okay. So I can thank you very much, Professor Hiram. I did again for this very, very interesting uh, uh, presentation that showed the expertise of your institution, IIT Madras, as one of the best in this field. Uh, so I want uh, now to introduce Professor uh, Ferrand to. To, to, to present the next step from Eco Central of Nantes. And I stop uh, the sharing. You can, you can share your document, uh, Professor Ferrand. Okay. So can you see my slide? Yes, you can. OK, it's very nice. It's OK? Yeah, it's OK. okay. So good uh, morning or uh, good afternoon, everyone, depending on when, when, where you're standing. Uh, so my name is Pierre Ferrand. I'm professor here in Ecole Centrale de Nantes and head of the uh, LIA lab, which is a research uh, department in uh, hydrodynamics, energy, and atmospheric environment. So pretty much uh, kind of brother to the uh, department in IIT Madras regarding the topics that we are covering. 
and uh, of course we are already uh, collaborating uh, in, uh, on the certain projects. So uh, I would like to give uh, a global presentation of the of the lab. Uh, we are also operating uh, major facilities and at the same time developing numerical modeling. So uh, there will be, uh, and it's very interesting, uh, kind of parallel between the two, pre two presentations. Uh, I start by giving um, some key figures for the LIA lab. Uh, in terms of volume, we are approximately 140 people. But this is including uh, non-permanent staff like PhDs and postdoc. Uh, interesting, we've been growing a lot since uh, the last uh, years. Uh, you see plus 30% since 2012, at the time the lab started in its present configuration. Uh, what is maybe particular is that uh, we are uh, working on uh, numerical hydrodynamics, ocean engineering problems, but not only. We have also some colleagues in the department working on the uh, lower atmosphere, uh, initially on the urban atmosphere, but there is also a connection to the marine sector because they are able to model the wind condition in the lower atmosphere, for example, for uh, modeling the uh, energy resource for floating offshore uh, wind turbines or the wind conditions for sailing ships. So there is a kind of a, um, connection to uh, the marine field, whatever is the, the research team within the, within the LIA lab. Um, key figures again, complements. So of course we, have, we are active in research. This is our, our task and uh, we've been growing in efficiency in the last years with today approximately 50 research papers a year in uh, uh, peer reviewed uh, scientific journals. Uh, a particular uh, part of our activities linked to the industry. Uh, we have a large part of non-permanent people being paid on uh, industrial contracts. So a strong link to the industry with, for example, um, a strong uh, research project that we call industrial chairs with the various um, big industries. Um, so in the list that you see here, you have uh, automotive industry, for uh, Renault, uh, Manhumel, and PSA. You have Bureau Veritas, which is the French uh, classification society. In, with them, we have a 10-year agreement for developing uh, wave structure interaction models uh, for the behavior of uh, big ships in heavy seas. And the last in the list is Man Energy Solution, who is a provider of big uh, energy systems for uh, uh, marine propulsion, especially. We have also uh, an activity in terms of startups because several startups originated from the lab in the last years. Um, and uh, another um, key point is the development of the uh, first and only test site in France for marine renewable energy uh, systems. I will have more uh, stuff on this uh, later on in the presentation. Um, so, this is not fully original, but this is our uh, methodology since a large number of years. We are developing our activities, combining model testing, full scale testing and numerical modeling with, and it is, this is similar to what is done in uh, IIT Madras. We are also trying regarding numerical modeling to develop as much as possible our own expertise and our own tools to be able to control uh, or simulation as best as possible. Uh, regarding uh, the, the, the rest of the global presentation of the lab, I would like to talk about uh, technology transfer. So uh, just before I was talking about uh, spin-offs, so there is a list which is repeated here. Uh, so today, the, these spin-offs of the, of the lab represent more than 50 jobs. I think that the figure is not accurate, probably uh, closer to 80. Uh, second in, in the list, uh, there is the, uh, some of our successes in the dissemination of softwares uh, with two examples. Uh, ISIS uh, CFD software, this is a finite volume software, which is distributed in the fine marine suite by Numeca uh, 
and uh, hydrogen. And this is the number one for software validation within the French uh, uh, Center for uh, Scientific Research, CNRS. And uh, this uh, software is especially um, uh, successful in the field of uh, naval, naval architecture. It's used, for example, this is one of the best uh, uh, success. It's used to, to design uh, America's kept, uh, America's kept uh, sailing boats. The second example is the SPH flow solver. It's a smooth particle hydrodynamic solver developed um, by our group together with Nextflow software, one of our spin-offs. And it's uh, also a, a, a big success. At the same time, in terms of uh, academic recognition and also in terms of uh, uh, industrial uh, application and success. Uh, so uh, this stopped my general presentation. I will now talk uh, about uh, give a very sh a presentation of our experimental facilities. Um, so on this slide, uh, there is no comment, but you can see a nice picture of our ocean engineering uh, uh, basin. So it's a 50 by 30 meters basin with five meters of water uh, with a 48 flaps wave maker that you can see on the left of the, of the, of the picture. Uh, so this facility is, is 20 years old, uh, very, uh, very effective in terms of research and especially wave making cap capacities. We can produce up to one meter press to trough regular waves and up to two meters photic waves in this basin. So it's very popular, for example, for testing marine renewable energy systems without uh, being obliged to go to very small models in heavy seas. Um, in terms of uh, facilities, I will go quickly on these slides talking about wind tunnels. We have also, as I said before, uh, activities in uh, atmospheric modeling. So we have the uh, corresponding uh, facilities and we have also engine and vehicles test benches, but this is not our, top, our main topic today. Talking about um, uh, ocean engineering related facilities, uh, again, uh, the hydrodynamic and ocean engineering tank I just talked to you before. Uh, so I already gave the, uh, the capacity of this facility. Uh, the second big facility uh, is the towing tank, 140 meters long, five meters wide and three meters deep with a carriage that can uh, goes up to eight meters per second. Uh, so this facility is the largest in France in the university and it's the second in size, the biggest uh, belongs to the Navy and you can apply a ratio of uh, three in size, but of course it's not the same type of activity. Um, these are the two major uh, model testing uh, facilities. Uh, we have other interesting small, smaller size facilities like a shallow water tank of 20 by 10 meters and also a recirculating canal which can be used for uh, long duration testing of uh, propellers, of rudders, of uh, towed systems, etc., etc. Uh, here I, uh, I move to uh, a few slides about of our, our test site at sea, which is called SEMREV. This is a multi-technology test uh, bed for marine renewable energy system that uh, Ecole Centrale de Nantes ha has been developing over the last 10 years. Uh, this is an old slide, but uh, it uh, insists on the fact that the development started in 2000. Uh, nine, and it has been a long story, and uh, this is something difficult because you're installing uh, you're installing uh, experimental um, uh, facilities in the open sea in the public uh, in a public area. So the one of the key points is obtaining the authorization from the the, the authorities uh, for uh, uh, for an installation which is completely new, and nobody knows initially how to to. to operated. So uh, one big part of the development was related to author, uh, authorization of the, uh, for, for this uh, site. Uh, this site is, uh, is meant to, to help industrials develop their own, uh, their own um, design. 
with uh, efficiency, reliability, and acceptability as the, 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 the main uh, targets. And uh, depending on the um, level of development of the IDs, we can uh, uh, help industrials from, uh, as mentioned on the slide, from the first idea to a demonstration in real conditions, which is the real uh, objective of this uh, test uh, site. So for those who have an idea of the, uh, of the, uh, the shape of, uh, of France, this is, uh, this is our country, France. Uh, I don't know if you can see my pointer. Uh, Nantes, we are presently here on the west part of, um, uh, of, uh, uh, of France uh, on the Atlantic coast. And the SEMREF site is uh, 30 kilometers offshore from, from the coast. Today, on this um, site, we have a, an impressive model. In fact, it's not a model, it's a full scale uh, floating wind turbine named Flogen, which is uh, with a power of two megawatts. Uh, so, this is a chart, a uh, nautical chart of the zone. Uh, so this is the base uh, at the shore. Uh, this is the one kilometer, uh, one square kilometer area, which is restricted to, uh, to navigation and, and on which we install our models. And uh, the, the, the line that you can see here is the power connection to the grid, because what is uh, particular to this uh, test site is that we can operate uh, systems with a connection to the grid that is in completely realistic conditions. Uh, this is a big investment from um, public authorities. You see that the global investment today is something like 20 million euros over a certain number of years. Uh, so this is a, a short uh, on this slide very quickly because time is short. Uh, you can see a view of uh, a sky view of uh, the floating wind turbine on the site. Uh, the floater is a square shaped uh, barge with the moon pool. It's a special design from a French company named Ideo. And this um, turbine has been operating since more than two years. It was uh, connected to the green at the end of 2018 uh, with uh, uh, an availability, uh, rate of availability, sorry, availability, <laughs> which is uh, at a very high level. You see in 2019, almost 95% availability and the capacity factor can reach a very high level. For example, in February 2020, the, 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 the system reached a 66% of capacity factor. This has to be compared to the usual 25 or 30% capacity factor of the onshore uh, uh, wind uh, systems. This is one of the advantage of going offshore for uh, the wind energy uh, industry. Um, so uh, uh, this is again a view of, of the system. And I will uh, go quickly on this, just saying that we are presently preparing, Ecole Centrale is presently preparing the next steps of development of the site uh, with projects up to 10 megawatts. Uh, that is a big uh, jump into in, into size of the uh, of the prototypes to be tested. Uh, okay, I will move now to uh, uh, computational fluid dynamics at uh, in the LIA lab in the LIA research department. Uh, so I have this slide, and of course I will not comment the the, the equations, but just to say that for. Uh, in the field of marine engineering, ocean engineering, uh, we are talking about free surface flows. And the big complexity and the big interest of our research is that we, are, we have to fight with very large different, uh, uh, many different scales uh, in terms of uh, uh, time and space. So this is what this slide, uh, this slide wants to, to, um, to document. Uh, so you can have non-breaking, breaking, breaking uh, flows, you can have fragmentation and mixing in terms of uh, coastal flooding. Uh, in terms of time and space scales, you, we have to, to, to cope with scales of hours and hundreds of square kilometers if we want to model uh, sea states. If we focus on the behavior of a ship, 
Typically, we will talk about minutes and uh, maybe one square kilometers. And from time to time, we have to focus on very uh, highly dynamic local flows with the uh, scales of seconds or uh, square meters. So, of course, there is no um, uh, uh, universal approach for coping with uh, such uh, complicated problems. And uh, Okay, this slide is uh, very complicated, but in fact, it, it's just an image of the number of different approaches we are developing in our department. Um, our key idea, again, is to combine uh, different methods that are uh, at best uh, for different uh, parts of the simulations. So to, to make it short, typically we want to uh, combine potential flow method with nonlinear conditions that are very comfortable with the modeling uh, waves, uh, including nonlinearities, and CFD models that are comfortable in uh, coping with more complex physics, such as viscosity, uh, fragmentation, uh, multi-phase aspects, etc., etc. So I have no time to uh, detail all of this, but uh, just uh, I will just show these pictures to uh, make clear that we are developing a very high variety of innovative numerical methods. So on these slides, you see an example of the SPH methods. Uh, you see a vortex method uh, for uh, diffusive vortex hydrodynamics. Uh, we are also working on the lattice Boltzmann method. Uh, another development is related to um, the development of um, weakly compressible solvers for Cartesian uh, grids with the uh, uh, target uh, to uh, the target being to uh, improve a lot the efficiency of CFD calculations. Um, a focus on the SPH method, which is one of our best, uh, again, our best success in, in, in that category of innovative methods. So you see that, uh, of course, uh, we have applications in the marine sector like ship slamming or uh, uh, like ship slamming, okay. <laughs> the other ones are not related to the marine sector, but this is a, a method which is very, uh, uh, I mean, can be applied to many different topics. You see aircraft ditching, tire aqua planning, water oil separation, pelton turbine, etc. Et uh, a few more slides on coupled approaches uh, for wave structure interactions. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I just have to, I have a small, uh, I just have to, to leave you for five seconds. I'm back. Yeah, I'm back, sorry. Working from home, sometimes you have small accidents like that. Okay. Uh, coupled approaches. So we, we are uh, working a lot on this, again, for uh, the reasons being to, to improve the efficiency of the modeling. Uh, our typical approach, and it was an idea that started 20 years ago also, uh, is to uh, use uh, functional decomposition to uh, combine potential flow modeling for waves and the local uh, modeling of viscous flow effects. So this is what we call the Swansea method. And this is what we develop now uh, using uh, <clears throat> open foam for solving the uh, CFD part. Uh, so we've been um, validating this approach. Uh, it's uh, the, import the, the, the important development, recent development is that we moved from single phase to uh, two phase modeling within this uh, Swansea approach recently. So this is a development that we have within the uh, Bureau Veritas share with Bureau Veritas. So the interest of such a parallel development is that the, um, the practical applications of the solver are very uh, quickly addressed uh, with uh, those new developments. <coughs> so I see that I already took 20 minutes. So I will use two, three more minutes and it will be finished. Uh, uh, just showing a few uh, ideas of ongoing projects that combine 
uh, experiments and, and numerical modeling. So first, uh, two examples of um, comparison between uh, green water, uh, green water test uh, on uh, offshore barge compared to SPH simulations. Uh, second example is the comparison of Swansea simulation of uh, the interaction of the irregular wave with the barge, uh, with the comparison between the uh, simulation and experiment, which, turn, which turns to be very uh, uh, satisfactory, even for long time durations. You see on this uh, slide plot that we uh, we are comparing the um, the signals after more than almost three minutes of a, a model scale simulation and testing. Second example, very quickly, quickly, it's within the Bureau of Veritas share. And this is one of the most complicated uh, experimental models that we've been developing in the lab over the last uh, two or three years. It's a segmented model of a, a container carrier with a very accurate capture of internal loading. And the idea is to provide uh, reliable um, uh, experimental data for validating or numerical modeling. Uh, you have uh, on the uh, on the picture an idea of the um, uh, the amplitude and uh, the highly uh, nonlinear flow that we are, are addressing in this uh, study. Second example is uh, within a European project, CERA. So it's hydrodynamics for sure, but the industry is the aeronautic industry. Uh, the problem at hand is the behavior of helicopters and aircraft when they are ditching on the free surface. And uh, we design a completely innovative system for launching models in, uh, uh, in controlled conditions, measuring the internal loads and comparing those uh, loads and, and, uh, and flow kinematics to uh, simulations. So this is the big uh, European project with a number of partners that are listed on, on, uh, at the, uh, on the picture. I'm almost done, and I would just like to uh, talk about the modeling of floating offshore wind turbines. So this is, of course, a hot topic uh, for us and in France and Europe globally. Uh, so very quickly, uh, this is interesting because for the, in these um, for this type of uh, structure, there is a very strong coupling between waves, wind, and structural deformation. So for uh, engineers, this is a very uh, nice nightmare. And uh, for modeling all of this at model scale, it's even more interesting. So we are developing very complex uh, models like the one uh, given here. And the recent developments uh, are mainly linked to, um, to the uh, reproduction of wind loads on the model without uh, blowing wind on the geometrical model, but uh, on the uh, but on the contrary, reproducing the loads on the model from an external uh, numerical simulation loop. So this is the so-called software in the loop approach. So this is the first, um, this is the first example in cooperation with the, uh, our uh, Norwegian colleagues from NTNU. Uh, this is another uh, project uh, with the uh, company SAPEM with an ongoing PhD thesis. And I must say that uh, there is also um, uh, a PhD student, uh, CITIC, who is co-supervised with uh, uh, Professor Sriheim and myself, who is also working on, uh, uh, partly on this problem. And at last, we are working on the uh, damping of uh, the uh, floaters for offshore wind, especially the flow around the uh, uh, flat plate that are used to damp, the, to, to damp out the, the motion. So this is again with the uh, NTNU as partners. So it was kind of a rush. I'm sorry, I've been a bit long, but uh, I'm not the only one, I would say. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's all for me today. <laughs> OK, thank, 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 thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Pierre Ferrand. It's uh, also very, uh, very nice presentation. And we can understand that uh, Eco Central and IETM Madras has very similar uh, facilities, but maybe some mini complementarity between some activity. Uh, so I think we have we tried to to make the the webinar for 
in one hour exactly. Uh, there is a time for some question or some uh, remark. Uh, I think uh, maybe I have one question, uh, very large, <laughs> because we cannot go deep in the scientific part. Uh, I see that uh, in, in India, uh, the, the facility that uh, Professor Sriram presents in IIT Madras are very, very interesting. Uh, is there any other uh, institution in India who is who have uh, similar facilities or maybe some complementarity? Uh, Professor Sriram? <laughs> yeah, uh, in India, uh, for ocean engineering, of course, we have the Naval Research Board. They have it's on the Navy, so it is not accessible to the public. They have a towing tank and all those large facilities, uh, but of course, it is not uh, allowed to others. But apart from that, of course, we do have at IIT Karakpur. Uh, they do have a ocean engineering uh, department, but I don't think uh, they have this much of different facilities yeah. that are available, like like under one under roof, uh, like in IIT Madras. They do have a towing cap tank, as well as some facilities they do have, but not because this all these facilities have been funded 20 years back with German funding, full. German funding. So that is why we could be able to bring such a large facilities over here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So uh, is there any question? Maybe we can open the time or some remark. Okay. So I think this was the first one of webinar. So anyway, this, uh, this presentation will be available on YouTube and also in the Heritage Network website. Uh, so it will be accessible and we will promote it to all our uh, partner in Heritage Network. So uh, if you want to add something, Professor Sriram or Professor Pierre Ferron, just uh, I hope that we can have more e exchange. I know that we have uh, between Ecole Centrale and uh, IIT Madras, we have already some research uh, exchange. And uh, I, I hope that it can be more and more. <laughs> Okay. Maybe Pierre Ferron, if you want to add something. <laughs> yes, I have very recent news that uh, for, for Sriram and for uh, all, both uh, institutions is that I, I managed to have the agreement of the, uh, of the head of research to uh, fund a new uh, co-supervised uh, student after CITIC. So we will be able to launch a call for, uh, for a candidature for, uh, for this new PhD. I'm very happy about this. Mm -hmm. That's so good. Yeah. very good. So we so will I, be. I, I was I was just uh, I mean preparing a, uh, an email to you that the public can announce. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, it is it is it is the Coututel joint PhD between yeah. IIT Madras and uh, Ecole Centrale of Nantes, and it is very good news to have the second one. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so this is very good news to to close this meeting. Thank you very much to all the participants. Thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah. I hope that we can do the next one very soon, the, the second webinar between two or three other uh, Heritage Network partners. Thank you again, and thank you. see you. Thank you. Thank you.